the National Cutting Horse Association presents Behind the Mines, a series by the Converse Cowboy, featuring Matt Gaines. Brought to you in part by Performance Horse Central and these fine sponsors. NCHA has always been a very important part of my life. Most importantly because um, at a very young age I lost my mother and it was this community, the NCHA community and the families and the friendships and everything that just kept me level and kept me focused on, on goals and they became my family, literally. I feel very close to so many people in this organization. Matt Gaines, thank you again for coming back, my friend, for the final interview. And uh, this is one I was really looking forward to doing. Congratulations on winning another world title. Thank you. Um, you bet. And I want to, uh, you know, we're going to dig into all of the things. But before we do, you know, we're two weeks out. We're meeting here in Ada, Oklahoma. You're already back at it at another weekend show. We're two weeks post futurity. How are you feeling? What have you been doing for the past few weeks? Well, trying to kind of just slow down and recuperate more than anything you know uh we've been going hard for all year last year pretty much but especially the last 45 days leading up to the maturity in the world finals i know you guys stay busy the break is definitely due it's definitely needed but i want to just dive right in and uh, we'll just rip the band-aid off right so you you go into the the first go we'll start with the mayor right you're deep in the set second to last horse What's the strategy going into the well, first go? Well, I think the first day, I don't remember what set I was in, but fairly early the first day, I don't know, maybe fourth set or something like that. But anyway, I, I think the cows I cut didn't act very good during the settle, but they got better as we went. But when I cut them, they acted like they did during the settle. You know what I mean? So, so you cut so what you wanted to I cut. I cut what I wanted to cut. They just weren't very good, and I think you know, hindsight, maybe I would have locked in on some different cattle. Bottom line is I, I cut what I thought I should cut and I was wrong. So how does your game plan strategy change going into the first go on the stud? Well, I had a better draw on him, so that helped. And, you know, I did adjust a little bit on, you know, on the type of cattle, you know, maybe I cut. I felt like I had a little better feel on them by then. And I felt like I got him showed pretty good. It wasn't great, but I cut decent cows and and got him showed, I think, the mark 17 or 17 and a half 17 or something and a like half, that. and I think uh, it would have been a 19 had you got the third cow right. cut. But I was impressed, like, the experience showed through. Like, you didn't try to rush a third cut. You stayed patient and, and just kind of died in the herd, marked a 17 and a half, which gave you a shot. Right. How did you know? Did you know how much time you had left? Well, yeah, I knew how much time I had left, and I was wanting to get cut, but I but I was also, because as I remember, that wasn't just a great set of cattle either. At the point in the run, like, I felt like I'd had a pretty good run, and, you know, I wanted, I wanted to finish. I wanted to get cut, you know, and finish working that third cow, but at the same time, I was careful not to do something and take myself out of it, and you know, it's kind of one of those deals had the situation kind of fit a little better where I could have got something cut sooner, you know, then I would have certainly done that. But the way the cattle were that were in front of me and, and the way they were acting, if I'd have tried to force it too much, I think I could have, I think I could have taken myself out and I sure didn't want to do that, you know, so I just tried to, I was trying to get cut, but at the same time, not do something that, that was going to wreck me either. Yeah, well, it was a smart play, and it, and it worked out definitely for that run. You know, you gave yourself a shot. How are you feeling going into the second go, knowing that you have one bullet? I don't know that that really changed anything for me. I mean, I, you just you, you have to take it all in stride. And you know what? I messed up on the mare, and that one was over with. So, you, you know, you can't even really worry about that anymore. Just focus on the one. And felt like he was my better horse of the two anyway. I mean, I was confident when I went and showed him. And I cut the first cow, and it, it cow kind of threw him a little head fake there early in the run. And he overreacted to it a little bit. And that got us a little behind, got us a little off center. And then it kind of, you know, the way it happened, that cow, he kind of misses it a little. So we're a little short, a little late getting back across to the left. 
and that cow kind of comes off the wall and then it just stops and it had me kind of stuck in a bad spot and nobody could get the cow to move and finally it was just too much pressure and it all fell apart you know what i'm saying like yeah it, do you so what do you <clears> think you wish you would have taken him into some more pre-works or had well, more time on cattle I, looking back i probably would have worked him a little more on cattle than i did that's what i felt like cost me i was comfortable with him and i and i felt like he was ready but but hindsight i didn't have him maybe as ready as i'd like to have had him mm -hmm. just put it like that well, it's definitely not the end of the road for either one of no, those horses. No, 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 no. Um, my, my dad told me a long time ago, he said, and, and I think it's true, he said, the most important thing about the maturity is to leave there with a good horse. You know, keep going and, and hopefully, you know, we'll do good down the road. What is going through that horse's mind before you ride into the show pen? Do you know, do you think they know it's a competition? You know, I, I mean, I've definitely had some in the past that, I mean, yeah, for sure. And and I don't know that I knew that early on, but but like I'm counting checks and and uh, and one time Pepto two. Both those horses, for sure, I thought Special New Baby was kind of this way. It was kind of like when it was finals night, it, it's almost kind of like, oh, everybody's in here to watch me, you know? It's like they kind of gave you that feeling, and, you know, and they just kind of, they kind of rise to the occasion, too. And, you know, so, I mean, I think definitely some of them, yes. I, I think they know something's definitely different, you know, because it just has a different feel. I don't care how many pre-works you go to and all that there there's no way to exactly simulate those first runs at the maturity i mean like even even your heart rate when we're a little more tense and our hearts beating a little faster you know they they notice that and i think they definitely know something's different about what's going on at that point Futurity for Matt Gaines was bittersweet, and I say that because one of your best friends ends up winning his first Futurity. So tell me how that felt, you know, helping Johnny Mitchell, marking a 230. What what was the feeling like for you whenever you looked up and saw that 230 on the scoreboard? It was as much fun, really, for me as when I won it. And I think that's every horse trainer's dream is to you know win the open futurity and to finally accomplish that it's a, it's such an awesome feeling and i remember telling them you know like thank them for helping me win it and my you know my goal now is to help you know help all them win it because i you know i want them to to experience that too he's one of my best friends in the world and besides all that i i truly felt like all the way through the futurity he had the best horse i mean and don't get me wrong there's a lot of really good horses there i think there was a lot of horses that could have won it had they cut the right cow but i just felt like through watching those horses through through the rounds i felt like that that to me johnny's mare could go slow and look good go fast and look good and she looked to me like she was the smartest one when she went fast. I'm curious to you know what were those talks like? We'll just, I'll pick the finals. You know, you're talking about watching cows. What was the strategy? What was the game plan going in? The same as always really is try to find some cows that that were going to try him enough that he could show his 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 mare off but not be too much to get him in a jam you know and i really felt like you know as long as we didn't cut something that was just going to run her over she was going to kind of handle the rest you know i always say when the set you know you ride all the cows down during the saddle and then once they start cutting then it's kind of time to add and subtract you subtract the ones that got worked and you know maybe you add some on the list that you didn't like that much during the saddle but get to acting better and you just kind of go through that process like you always do and just that was we it, happen to be right this time was there a feeling that like a special feeling before like did you have a well, knowing that that yeah, was going to happen I, I felt yeah i felt like he was going to win it you know all the way through like i said obviously you you still got to get the job done but 
We, it's kind of a joke between us now, but when I won the Futurity in 16, it was kind of the same thing with with that mare I had. I know she was a lot of people's pick early on, and because I, you know, even after the first go round, I had several people texting me saying that's the Futurity champion, you know, and stuff like people do, which you really wish they wouldn't do that. <laughs> like, it's great, but at the same time, like, you don't even really want to be thinking about that stuff. But everything's just falling into place so much. It was almost like it's too good to be true kind of deal. Like, it's, you know, it's going to bite me in the butt somewhere. But, but I remember before, right before we went down there, I got them all together and I told them, I said, look, this may be the last really good chance I have to win the Futurity. I said, y'all be on point and I'll take care of my job and we'll see, you know, see if we can get this done. So they've all kind of kidded me about that, you know, ever since about kind of not giving them an ass chewing, but kind of giving them a little pep talk before we went down there. So I asked Johnny when it, after the, his semifinals run, I said, all right, I said, Who's giving the talk tomorrow night? You want me to give it or are you going to give it? <laughs> That's awesome. and, uh, I just felt like it was his year. I just did. It just kind of had that feeling all along to me, and thankfully it ended up that way. In your opinion, outside of your own and outside of the Johnny's horse that we talked about, what was the horse that impressed you most? I thought Austin's horse was really a good horse for sure. Kara's horse, really good horse. I mean, I, there you know, too many to even mention, and there were some that didn't make it that, you know, I thought were, you know, really good horses. Um, you know, I- Maybe I, that's a better question. What was the horse that didn't make it that well, impressed you? Well, we call him Law. I think his name's Dalton Vick, Vicker, or whatever that works for oh, Circle okay. Y. He showed a little gilding that- Right? The, I mean, the I think he went out the first go round yeah, that looked that phenomenal, horse. you yeah. know, and just, I don't remember what happened, but yeah. But you know, he didn't make it out of the first go round. I mean, that horse was, I mean, he was pretty dang cool. So, yeah. you know, there's there's one right there that you know I can think of off the top of my head, quality wise, sure should have been in those finals. It looked like to me, from what I, you know, from what you can see from one go round, he looked awful good. Right. In hindsight, what was the most important lesson that you took away from the 2021 NCHA Futurity? Maybe change things up a little bit, try to get them worked on cattle a little more and try to have them just a little more prepared for, for anything we might face down there. Are there any um, twos coming three prospects that you're looking forward to getting started? Well. Yeah, I've got a, a hottest filly that I think that I actually own. I think it's a, a really nice horse. Jim has a, a Kit Kat Sugar filly out of Pet Squirrel that that right now feels like could be a really good horse, really talented. And then I've got a gilding, a uh, Kit Kat Sugar gilding out of New I Wood that I think's a nice horse. I for sure think the two fillies, the one of mine and the one of his, I, they sure both feel like they have a chance to be really good open horses. So, you know, we'll see. I like the way they've started and the way they feel right now. So we'll kind of see how it progresses. Well, Matt, thank you again for being a part of the Behind the Mind series. Thank you for your time, for the wisdom that you shared. I know I've gotten a lot out of it. I know listeners have gotten a lot out of having you on the show. So I really I genuinely appreciate it. Man, I wish you the best of luck in 2022. Well, thank you. And I, I'd like to thank you for doing it because, you know, I, w I would like to see, see us find ways to do more stuff kind of like this because I think it gives people a little more insight to the inside what's going on at these you know at these shows and and how we approach things and one thing I hope they get out of it is you know we all struggle I don't care how much you won who you are you know, there's times we all fight our heads and you just got to keep pushing through, keep grinding and, you know, and keep going. And if you do that, it gets better. And, you know, so that's one thing I hope, you know, everybody sees, you know, through this is that, you know, the, the main thing is just don't give up when, when times get tough, keep, you know, get some help, keep pushing through. We get help, I get help and keep going down there and, and it'll turn around. So I, that's one thing I hope that, you know, people get out of this. So. Right on. Well, thank you for the kind words, and that was very well said. And I think that's a great place to end it. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Yes, sir.